boys, I'm here to give you the best bruiser red cane build. First things first, we're going to be going green smite, and we're going to be getting trinket and pot. Now, keep in mind, with red cane, you are going to be playing aggressive every game. You're not going to be full clearing with the bruiser red cane setup. Now, with lethality red cane, there's an exception. There's difference because that is playing more selfish. It's playing more solo carry. It's playing more like blue cane. If you go lethality red cane, we'll call that purple cane. Okay? We'll call that purple cane. But... With a Bruiser Red Cane, we're actually going to be taking Conqueror, Overheal, Tenacity, Last Stand, Cosmic Insight, Magical Footwear, Double AT, and Killing HP. And if you're going to be playing aggressive early, you always, always, always take Pot, and I'm going to be looking to put an early ward on my blue. Now this clear, you're going to be doing every single game. Not the same exact one, but the same start. So, the old theory, the old saying, Cane starts Raptors is back you are going to start raptors so i'm either going to do a raptors red rugs or i'm going to do raptors blue grom now i'm probably going to do raptors blue grom because that will give me a little bit of a better start and that'll force a vertical a little bit faster ganking bots going to be pretty difficult and they are going to give me my wrong orbs but i mean they have three range two melees so i think it's a lot better to camp bot than to camp top but no, the whole thing is is it doesn't really matter what you get early game because the orbs you get early game aren't as much as what I'm gonna get later on. So as long as I get more red orbs than I do blue orbs, it's fine overall. Oh wow, actually Jarvan's gonna be starting blue, so I'm actually gonna be able to get a nice little early invade on him. That's perfect. That's a great start for me. So yeah, this is something that you typically want to look for. You can see I'm gonna, I'm gonna mess with the Jarvan. Oh, I actually got that camp. Nice. Did early kill on this guy. So that early level of aggression is exactly what you want to look for when you're playing red cane because i was just mentioning this to my chat because a lot of a lot of cane players are getting cane or at least red cane confused because they haven't played red cane in so long so i actually do have a lot to explain so you guys are gonna hear a lot of yapping this game and i hope you don't mind but you know i think that's why a lot of people watch my content is to hear me yap about cane but red cane as a bruiser is not going to be playing as a solo carry it's going to be playing as kind of a low econ utility team fight carry so you carry through your early game aggression, you carry through your team fighting, your skirmishing, and your objective control. So whenever I have my form, I look to force as many fights as I can with my team through my team. I have the potential to carry as a teammate, not as a solo carry. But keep what I'm saying in mind, because typically what I'm going to be looking for, and this is why I take inspiration secondary, is I'm going to be looking for a lower econ setup, which means, you know, a cheaper, more efficient setup at earlier spikes than the enemy jungler and to have that earlier control so this means i'm able to actually control you know every objective and i'm also good at just being overall better than what the enemy jungler is going to look to do so jarvin's going to look to like force fights and engage i'm going to look to counter those engages i'm going to look to force the better fights right so that's kind of how you're actually going to be looking to play red cane and i know a lot of you are probably wondering well you know what if I want a 1v9 as red cane? Well, that's where you're going to be going lethality red cane. That's where you're going to be going more, uh, you know, items like Eclipse. You're going to be going items like Profane Hydra. And I actually do have a build for that. And I'll probably have a video on that coming out sometime soon. Because I already do have that one recorded. Um, it is a very fun build. It's a very fun playstyle. But this is way different than that. This is the traditional bruiser red cane. And like I said, not a lot of people remember how he actually plays out. But want to play very aggressive early. Think of him kind of like you would a Lee Sin, or I wouldn't necessarily say the same level of aggression way, in an early game, smite, because obviously you're not always going to be able game. to fight a lot of fights. Yo, Mountain Dew, thanks for two months. But think about him with that same, like, you know, early mid-game aggression, right? But you just outscale a lot of junglers. So any sort of, like, skirmishy jungler, you're going to outscale, because you excel at team fighting. Any jungler that excels at team fighting outscales junglers that excel at skirmishing. Skirmishing is like a 1v1, 2v2, 3v3. So that's not necessarily your strength, but you can do it. So that's why I look for like early invades or early ganks. And the reason why Kane is so good at those isn't because he has damage, it's because he has mobility 
and it's because he has speed for clearing his camp. So as you can see, being able to like move quickly into his jungle or move quickly into a gang. So I'm not looking for a traditional 2v2 like, oh, Karis, my I tried playing Red Kane and I'm losing 1v1s to Elise and, you know, Warwick and Lee Sin and Briar. Like, yes, you are going to lose those 1v1s because you need to fight them, not with your mechanics, but with your brain. To outthink them. By the way, this was Karis, my Kane is a champion of game. mind, not of just Holy Kane time red is back 1,000 years of Kane and 1,000 yes, MORE. Is. Rank 1, here we come, yes, G-I-G-A-C-H-A-D. 33, bubble. hope you're doing well, friend, less than 333. I am doing amazing, thank you, my friend. So we're just gonna farm our camps here, and we're maybe gonna look for the dragon. He might take it. I probably should have got my control word on the dragon before I left the eye to do it. That's not really good for him, though. That's really not that good for him, because getting that dragon is uh, pretty low value, because I'm getting a lot of gold and XP, and like I said, I'm gonna scale, and I'm gonna be stronger in the team fight. So him getting the early dragons doesn't really do much to kind of help in that later on setup. Oh wow, she actually lived. She just waited for me, we killed her though. Alright. I wasn't that strong, so I couldn't really do much. So, first time we're gonna get Sundered Sky, and we're gonna prioritize getting Warhammer first. It's the stronger component of the two. Alright. So now we're gonna get our bot side. I'd like to get our six early, so maybe we could look for ganks. Not just normal ganks, but dives as well. It's a really good start for Kane, by the way. And yeah, like I mentioned, losing early dragons isn't bad because once I get to that mid game, I actually have my form and I'm actually able to team fight. That's when I'm actually going to be able to carry. So normally, it's not bad to lose early drakes. How the hell is Aphilios level six? That is wild. He's level 6 before me. Crazy. Doesn't Sky proc only with auto? Yeah, it does. Which is fine. You're going to get enough autos in order to make that work. Garvin's looking for the dive right now. I just saw him. There he is. Yeah, they don't have any mana. I, I just need to like not look bot ever, to be honest. He needs to chase up. Yeah, because I'm already moving here. Oh, Jarvan didn't reset. He only got a moat first reset. That's why he had so much XP, because he didn't even reset. I reset, I think, twice. I probably look for this, and the thing is, if Jarvan comes to fight me, I don't think he has enough damage to actually kill me. So if he does come, it's actually good for me because I get a lot of orbs. I'm kind of baiting him to come to me. Can I just go get all my top set. Also get scuttle RNG, which is nice. And that first item will be a pretty nice spike. The reason why Sundered Sky is such a nice first item is just because it's going to give you a solid amount of damage and it's also going to give you a lot of sustain. 450 HP is nothing to like, you know, bat an eye against. 450 HP and then your um, scaling HP, you're going to be at around 500, which is going to be around 2.5% uh, bonus to your passive. And think about it, that passive bonus also applies to your old team. So I get 3 in Q and I'm going to start maxing W. Oh, that's really bad. Yeah, I want to look for ganks, but I just had nobody to gank for. Oh, that's unfortunate. They all died. I look for the grubs here, though. I The support's not rotating. Jarvan will probably get one, unless I, like, I don't know, somehow go crazy. They're picking out to be danger, because he should be around here. Oh, no, he's already on it. Alright.
Yeah, I could have flashed on it, but I didn't want to like be over that wall and then also be stuck like where I really is. I could just go for the grubs. I got a good amount of orbs. I got his flash. I think it's better to be safe than sorry in that scenario. Maybe we could look for a gank at the top. Right. I don't see you helping out. Now we have our first item. So even though I don't have my form, we might be able to fight this. We both have no ulti, but he has no flash. I could be a little bit more aggressive than him. And if they get him low, that'd be sweet too. It looks like Smolder's just gonna ulti wave and back up. I have to give this dragon actually. Let me see. Oh, nice. That's good. Okay, we probably go for dragon then. Yeah, I was gonna say, I'd imagine Jarvan's gonna be here. Nice. Speed my red form. Huge. We go for the dragon. Yeah, having a double support and a red cane in the front line is going to be crazy. And the fact that we are getting the second dragon is going to make it really easy. Because the all all the next dragons should be ours. And I'll show you kind of how you play through that. Because like I mentioned, the way that you play red cane is so much more different than what a lot of people are used to. So, like I mentioned, it's just a lot more team play. It's a lot more team orientated. kind of rough because I don't really have best laners to By play way, off this of, like, Pop really behind, would, uh, pretty this game. behind, but as long as you have one laner to play off of, that's when you're, like, finding value. Oh, easy clap, thanks for the prime. But, uh, yeah, see my top, I'm not gonna, like, look to do too much there. When we get, like, anti-heal, maybe I'll be able to do something there. But, he's gonna be a little bit of a problem. I can handle Irelia in a team fight though, that's the main important thing. Is that, in that team fight setup, that's when you're, like, actually able to do stuff. Yeah, with Talon, we actually... i to make sure I'm going on the same target he is. Oh, this is bad. I'm gonna get the kill trade and get out. Yeah, I have a good amount of sustain, so I can kind of just trade there. Wow, he flashed for that one for one. I think it was worth a shutdown, he flashed for that. That is really good. So, see what I mean when I say that Look at the value that I have in team fights. And that was pre-form. That wasn't even post-form. I'm not even getting the value out of the HP yet. And because I, I need to emphasize how important HP is towards your passive, I'm going to be getting more HP. So my, my components I'm going to be looking to get post-form is all the HP components. That's your highest priority. So we're going to prioritize the Phage. Even though I don't like Phage that much. I like a Sweeper too. Uh, it's not like Blue Cane where you're a lot mo more mobile. It's kind of swerving to the Jung. I can probably get Sweeper and play a little bit more like the traditional Jung. And... Um, yeah, getting Cleaver and maybe anti heal at some point would be nice. And then uh, Eryx, I think, would be great. But you can see, 454 healing is nothing to gawk at early game. And like I mentioned, the amount of HP that you're getting as well is really, really nice to affect your passive. So right now, it's a 28% healing passive because of the... Uh, I have around like 500, 600 HP bonus HP. No, I have over 600, maybe even 700. That is, uh, what, 3%? So that's adding the... Passive to around 31%. Pretty nice, I think. And you're also getting a lot of HP, so 2k HP on one item is really nice. Probably not gonna go for that rift. It's a little bit too greedy. But I hope you guys can kind of see what I mean now, where it's like about setting your team up. So there's two top, and our top is really behind, so we're gonna look to play through our bot lane. So unlucky, we didn't get this good RNG on our side, but it's fine to give. And yeah, I'm just gonna make sure I can get my top side camps and just to um, play for Bob. I hope people don't get baited by Shojin first item. Shojin is definitely not a first item. Neither is Cleaver. Please, if you're a Cade main or even if you're just you know, playing any, any other champ, do not get baited by those items. Shojin and Cleaver are not first items. Repeat that for me, chat. YouTube chat. Shojin, Cleaver, they're not first items. Oh, what do you want? What do you want to do? But Shojin and Cleaver are not first items. All right, so we're gonna look to get that pop tower here. Okay. 
Um, we had some good poke. I looked for the dive, but I looked for some poke on the uh, Zyra here. We could honestly win a two v three. I'm not gonna lie to you. Hope that she like listens to my pings. It doesn't like chicken out if there's three. We got 100% with a two v three. I'll show you the strength. Build cleaver first item. No, you never build cleaver or shojin first item. Those are two horrible first components. Ah, uh, damn, he's too fast for that uh, empowered Q. There you go. Nice. Yeah, he's greeting so hard by staying there. And the reason why is because they are items that amplify other items. You just need to understand what items are essential for. Cleaver is essential for people that are stacking armor. No one's stacking armor on their first item. They get it normally in their second item. Unless you're playing top cane, that's a different story. But even in top cane, you want to sustain the item to keep you in lane longer. That's just, that's, I mean, that's lane essentials. I mean, that's, that's like lane 101. Uh, but yeah, no one's getting armor in the early game. And Shojin is an item that amplifies other items. Because it's amplifying your spell damage. Think of it kind of like a grudge, okay? That's like the easiest way I can mention it. And people will say, oh, what about the haste? Well, what about um, Thunder Sky's passive? What about the HP? What about the damage you're getting? It's the best all around. It's like it's like your first item being profane or Yumu's if you're playing blue game, right? You're not going for grudge first item, right? Well, it does the most damage. Well, it does the most damage counter what they're building and to amplify your other damage but the shojin is a good like fourth or fifth or maybe even sixth item but early on you want to go for a uh, sundered sky and then second you do want to go cleaver it's the most realistic setup for you find here look at how look at how tanky i am and look at how much damage i do still do i still do i do deal still do Okay, this one. The ulti, so I don't need that. Let me get on top of this guy. I want to hit the big W on them. Ow, 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 ow. What? That did so much. Zyra did 2k damage to me in one fight. I played that fight pretty sloppy, but dude, Zyra did 2k damage to me in one fight. But okay, guys. I'm tanking. Okay, hear me out. Guys, shut off your brain for a second. Don't think of any, any, any you know, pointless remarks, any pointless comments you can make. Just look at stat value. Look at realism stat value. Don't look in theory. Don't look in ideas. I'm tanking 4.7k damage in 18 minutes. In an 18 minute fight, I'm taking 4.7k damage. And I don't even want to imagine the damage I dealt that fight. My Sundered Sky, at first component, without a second item, has healed me for 1454. My overheal has shielded me for 3500. At 18 minutes. And think about this. I am not playing to solo carry. I'm playing to carry team fights. And I would say, even though I didn't play that team fight perfectly, I'd say I did pretty damn good. You know? So, you, you see what I'm getting at? Realistic stats don't lie to you. This is why playing the game is more important than anything else. And being able to see this in person, being able to like view this in person. This is what Bruiser Red Cane is. This is what normal Red Cane is. Is that you have a lot of damage, you have a lot of sustain, and you can carry team fights. I'm not saying, oh, you can go out there and kill everybody. With enough items, you can. But right now, I can't, you know? You're not going to get two items and, oh, Kyrus, my, why am I not one-shotting one everybody at one item? Because this is not a build to one-shot people with one item. I have a build for that. Like I said, that, that build will come out. Don't you worry. Don't worry. Your friend Kyrus, my, will take care of you. But just look at what I can show you, you know? This is how insanely good Red Pain can be as a frontline bruiser. This is stat for stat, the highest value you're going to be getting. Okay, so now, like I said, we're just going to keep forcing objectives. And yeah, now that they're starting to get armor, guess what? Cleaver's going to just counter that. And then they have sus they have a lot of sustain. I'm going to counter that with anti-heal. No. They're probably going to counter my sustain with anti-heal, which is also a smart thing to do. But see, that's why, guess what I'm going to get to counter their anti-heal? Shields. The shields counter anti-heal. And with overheal and green smite and sterics, 
Does anyone here understand what I'm telling them yet? Anybody? So this is where third item Sterix is going to come in insane. So Sterix is an item that is insanely good after you have 2 HP items. 1 HP item in Sterix, I don't like. 2 HP items in Sterix, amazing. Probably the best item you can get for any bruiser, for any tank, any skirmisher. 2, I 2 HP items and a Sterix, amazing. Stat for stat, the highest value you're getting. Or your money back, you know. And then anti-heal, I mean, quick quick and easy survey. Am I getting autoed more or am I autoing more? I think I'm autoing more, so I can get Executioner. If I'm getting autoed more, then I can get Bramble. But see, notice, I'm not going to farm all my camps. I'm not going to be like AFK doing stuff. I'm going to look to just play with the team, right? That's how you play as a, as a bruiser. Like I said, think of it as like a Zinzel. Level 2 E before your, your Q, yes. You, you go 3 Q, max W, max E. Because your Q doesn't actually give you any bonus damage. It's percent HP base. It doesn't give you bonus damage. That's nice. We got a flash. Okay. Yeah, I'll take it. I'll take it. You guys see what I'm getting at now, Twitch chat? All those people that are like, oh, I'm not doing enough damage. That's not what Red King's about. That's what Assassin's about. And now, yeah, we're gonna max our E fully. Prisoner third will also be fine. Prisoner it's solid. Um, it got nerfed. I wouldn't say it's hard nerfed, but I don't really want to go tank items because that is a tank item a bruiser item is something that's giving you damage and also tankiness so i think that's that might actually be better even though death stance isn't that good but death stance does synergize really well when you have uh items like sundered sky and stare especially on a low cd with cosmic insights so i actually will give stance the credit it deserves for once in it's a pathetic life I, i've never been really a death stance enjoyer myself i'm not gonna lie to you i saw kill this guy now we get the tower our mid lane needs to back up here Mine is gonna walk up and at our, our uh, I really have for free. I think she's gonna say I got flashed on. Didn't type anything. Yeah, I know a lot of people are probably gonna be annoyed with this playstyle because it's like, oh, you have to play for your teammates. But I mean, playing for your teammates is. Not a bad play style, and you're willingly playing Ross. I'm just teaching you how to play him to his best, you know, to the best degree that you can play him in. Right? That's good. So yeah, that's what I'm trying to show you guys is like during this stage of the game, I could play behind my my strong lane, which is mid lane, and I can look for kills in the side, and then we could uh, just team fight for objectives. So that's all you need to do: make sure you're team fighting for objectives. So I'm gonna get executioner. I start working for Steric. And honestly, I'm going to go double Ruby here, which is going to give me another 300 HP, which is going to give me even more sustain on my passive. So right now, we have 130 HP from this. I have 300 from that, 450 from that, 400 from that, and then I have a passive that's 31%. So if you do the math, it's around 40% HP on my passive healing. And that also applies to my ult healing, so good for thought on that as well. Let's get control of the top side here. And as you can see, I could just face tank all the damage and whatnot. Don't have any vision on the Baron, which is kind of dangerous for us, but I don't think they're around. We could look for the fight. I really just cut out here. The anti heal. I'm gonna alter because she's just the most important target to kill. And we're gonna look for the kill on Jarvan. And just look at that. I don't take any damage. I deal a lot of damage, I don't take any damage, and every team fight, you're gonna win. So, but anyone in chat want to challenge the professor? Anyone here want to tell me that Red Kane is weak? Because, listen, I did not spend my entire life dedicating myself to Kane to listen to a bunch of crybabies talk about my champion being weak when it's strong. I, if there's one thing my community is not going to be, it's not going to be a hypocritical community. Because I hated 
when my champion is strong, but people are saying, oh no, this champ's weak. I can't climb because it's weak. I can't do this because it's weak. Red Kane is strong. Very strong. Incredibly strong. So. Hopefully, nobody has anything to say against that. There's one thing I loathe in this community. is OTPs that never admit that their champ is strong. Red Kane strong, Blue Kane strong. Play him. Good on a 1k OP account then? Oh, I will, don't worry. The thing is, is I need to test out all the itemization to find out what is stat for stat the best, but I'm pretty sure this is it. This is it. But I want to try out some other builds that are uh, kind of interesting. I want to try out like a Lethali Ross build. I, I'm, I'm still fiddling around with like other playstyles because think about it, this is not just a singular playstyle. There's many different playstyles, but this is the most iconic. This is the most consistent red game that you're going to be playing. This is the one that I would recommend you do every game because it's going to find you the most success throughout all your games. But as you get higher rank, like you mentioned, play to one KLP, there are different builds for different scenarios, for different setups, for different comps. It's a lot more, um, it fluctuates a lot more per game. But in low elo, and for, you know, any game between iron to master, this is the best red game build, stat for stat. This is pound for pound, best red game build. I will gladly play this build in KLP, don't, don't worry. This, this build will thrive in that environment because in one KLP is where I get really, really good teammates. The only reason I'm not doing it right now is because, yeah, like I said, I'm just testing shit out. But after a lot of games of testing, I completely tell you guys that this is set of going. And if I get Sterics before this next fight, Jesus Christ, my boys. Dude, Riven is, like, giving up towers and gold and everything. One of those players that just tries to, like, be the main character and do everything. We just need three mid, one bot, one top. Smolder's not going to do anything, because I'm going to get Sterics. I'm going to go crazy. I need to get Sterics before this next fight. If I get Sterics before this next fight, i got to show you the full power of Kane. Sorry, I got I got, I got attacked you. I hate it when, like, non-junglers shot call. You just win the fight at Dragon. <laughs> By the way, if this was Karis, it would unironically win this game. 29 months with Da Homie, oh my dog. We rush, but all G. We have two supports, a full tank, and a talon. Us trying to rush the Baron if statistically is the lowest percent chance of us winning because it's a 4v5 against a fully stacked Smolder, a Zyra, and Nirelia when we're bunched up in one small area. See, the thing is, I know I'm playing in Master. I know I'm playing in, like, you know, low, low elo. See, this is why Challenger players consider Master to be low elo is because people don't actually understand, you know, just the basic essentials of, like, what is a winning and a losing setup. They don't understand numerics of the game, which is why a lot of High elo players, you know, feel this way. Because look, right now, it's a Baron setup, but we have no vision of the top side. So now we're forced to actually give up the Baron to get this Dragon. It's kind of gross, but I'm going to go for it anyway. This is not my fault. I'm the one who tried to set up vision. I'm the one who tried to mention that we need vision, but you can only do what you can do. 
But I don't think the enemies are... Oh, thank god the enemies aren't doing that. Thank god the enemies are not doing that. So yeah, in this setup, you do not look to... What am I call it? P50, the objective. You look to fight the objective here, so... Exactly what I'm going to be doing. And look how tanky I am. Team helps me out here. Oh, that would have been a big ult if Seraphine paid attention to that. Okay, let me just keep healing. Keep frontlining. Nice. Nice. I wish I... Honestly, I kind of wish I died so I could show you how much damage I tanked in that fight. That was a 7k HP damage tank without dying. 7k HP. You guys, we could just... Uh, yeah, we're not going to be able to do Baron right now. We don't have time to do it. What are they doing? They have Hextech gates, man. We could just get mid tower, top tower, get the camps. Kane, you're not real. I might go AFK. Which are you guys watching this? Can anyone else see this? Please, please, somebody let me know that you're out there. They TP'd immediately. They have Hextech gates. Wow. Hello, Jarvin. Jarvin. Saying 9x me. Let me get vision so they don't do the Baron when I reset. That's kind of another scary scenario. You guys can see this, right? Alright, well, honestly, they don't have any. They don't really have that much magic damage, so I think I'll get Randuin's last item. And I'll get Elixir Vine right now because this next fight is going to be the Baron fight. So I want to be stat for stat as highest value as I can for this next fight. Either way, he failed gank bot and stole my cannon wave twice. I, dude, what? Thank God I'm mature. <laughs> what the hell? All right, we could definitely look to do Baron now. I'm gonna look for a pick and uh, smolder right now. No one's behind him. I don't see anyone with the E. Yeah, so I can just look for this immediately. I didn't take the power. A little bit of an early ult. Just wanted to stay on top of him. Yeah, that's not really. Let's back up away from the tower. Stop taking that. My W off. And I literally take zero damage because I am Thanos. Except if it's her. And. Oh my god. This build is ins. Red Kane is insane, man. No way people think this champ is weak right now, dude. Oh my god. Honestly, I'm gonna plug my Twitch. I've never had an entire team blame my macro before. That is absurd. That is absurd. Oh, actually, this is the one and only time I've ever plugged myself on a Smurf account. I carried, but okay. Oh my god. How crazy is this build, by the way? Yeah, Vistage would be a great, like, a fantastic last item. I can't wait to show you how much damage I tanked after this game. Like, genuinely. You guys will be so amazed by how much damage I tanked after this game. Let me get my uh, Randuins right now. Never mind, you're the goat. Nice. Sees that it's me now. Hi, YouTube. This is a tuber. Say hi to YouTube, chat. No worries. It's not one of those tubers where it's like my team played me, so I carried. It's it's just showing off the best build. This is by far the best red cane build. Not even close. Not even close. All right. We get this blue. Oh, I got outspited there. Oh, 
boy! 8.5k damage tanked in that fight. Jesus! Oh my god, Red Kane is disgusting right now, dude. Oh. Oh. And that's what. Oh my god. I don't even have any MR this game, too. I don't even have Visage, amplifying my healing and shielding. Look at my overheal, by the way. Total damage block, 20,000 damage, dude. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. When you're almost taking 10k damage in a single fight, and I'm not even the carry. I'm I'm just I'm just a team fight there. I'm not even the main carry. Jesus dude. Jesus. That is wild. I must live there too. I must live there. Yeah, overheal just does so well because it's based off your percent. It's based off your HP. It's 11% of your base HP. So it's giving me a, almost a 500 HP shield. And then, yeah, you can see my stats. I'm, I do, I have 321 damage. So this is not like I'm, I'm, I'm not dealing low damage. All right, I gotta show, wait, I gotta show YouTube the damage taken and the damage dealt real quick. This account was Masters last season. It just got placed. So my damage dealt was highest damage on the team. My damage taken was 46,000. My self mitigate damage was 86,000 damage. And my healing done was 27,000.